Hey, what's up guys? So, so far, so good. We have created most of our backend where we created the CRUD operation API endpoints and the auth API endpoints. And in this video, I want us to move on to the front end. So if you haven't watched some of the previous videos in this particular playlist, I recommend you do so, so that you can see how we created our backend using Node.js, Express and MongoDB. I'll leave a link at the description section below uh, to that particular playlist. So on the front end, we will be working with React. So what is React? React is a very popular JavaScript library which was created by Facebook for building user interfaces. And React is component based. So we'll be creating several components and then composing them to make more complex UIs. And it is also declarative. And what we mean by declarative is that when a particular piece of state changes in our application, React will efficiently update and render just the right components which were affected by that particular piece of state. So React won't re-render the whole application, but certain parts of the application which were affected by uh, that particular piece of state. And then React uh, can be used on mobile applications. So you can create mobile apps, that is iOS and Android apps using React Native. So you can take your skills to the next level by learning React Native and start creating uh, awesome mobile applications using React. So in our definition here, I want you to pay close attention to some uh, keywords. The first one is library. And the other one is user interfaces. So React is a library and not a framework. The difference between a library and a framework is that a framework comes as a whole package for creating complex applications. But React is just a library for creating user interfaces. So React won't handle other parts of our application, e.g. Uh, routing, or uh, performing network requests. So for that, we'll need to depend on third party libraries. For routing, we'll be using React Router. And what React Router does is to give us a multi-page feeling in our single page React application. So with React, we only have one HTML page, that is index.html page, and we inject the whole application in that particular one page. But with the traditional websites, we usually have multiple HTML pages. We have an index.html page, which is mostly the home page. We have the about.html, contact.html, services.html, and we have a lot of HTML pages in the traditional websites. But with our React app, this is a single page web application that means that we have only one html page and then we will use react router to bring the multi-page feeling in our application and then for network requests we'll be using axios which is another a very popular javascript library as you can see we have more than 16 million downloads within the last week so axios is a very popular library for uh, performing network requests, we'll be able to perform the post request, get, and all those CRUD operation requests to our backend. And then uh, for our components, we'll be making use of Material UI. So we want to be staying our components from scratch. We'll be using Material UI. Uh, it provides React components for faster and easier web development. And for state management, we'll be making use of Redux. So Redux gives us a, what we call a global state. So we'll have a Redux store which will contain our uh, application state and we can access this state from any other component instead of uh, passing state via props, uh, which is a much tedious way of doing things in React. So we'll be making use of Redux. And the good thing is that now in Redux, we have hooks. So we'll be using hooks instead of using the traditional connect higher order component and map state to props at the bottom of our components. So traditionally we used to use the connect uh, higher order component 
and do some crazy stuff at the bottom of the component in order to get our state and map it to props in that particular component but in this case we'll be doing things in a much easier way so you don't need to fear redux we have a hook called use selector which will select a piece of state from uh, the store and we can easily use it in a particular component one last thing is that you'll need to have Node.js installed in your machine. So make sure Node.js is installed, which I assume you already have it installed because we have been working with the Node in this particular release from the start. So I just expect you to have it installed in your machine. Now, how do we create a React app? To create a React app, I'll just uh, get out of this browser and I'll open this folder which I created when we were starting this series. And inside this folder, we created two folders, the backend folder and the frontend folder. On our backend is where we created our API endpoints connected to the database, used the .env file for environment variables and did all the fun stuff on the backend. But this time round, will be working on our front end so what i want us to do is to open this folder on cmd so i'll just type cmd here and then i'll open the entire folder on visual studio code so i'll use code and a period this will open the entire folder on visual studio code and once it opens uh, what we will be doing is that we will be running our backend server on this command prompt and what you'll we'll do is to just type cd and then the name of our backend folder which is backend this is where our server is located and this should take us to that path and we will learn our backend using nodemon so this is how we run our server and uh, we'll be able now to connect to our server and do all the fun stuff with it but for now because we haven't reached the point where we are performing CRUD operations on our front end we can leave this one out but this is what we'll be doing later on in this particular series okay so i'll just minimize this i won't run it because we, won't, we don't need it for now but in our visual studio code i want us to work with our front end so click at the terminal at the very top and then create a new terminal and this kind of a terminal will open up on VS code and what we want to do is to enter into the front-end folder using CD and then front-end and we want to create our react app in this particular folder and how we create a react app is by using npx and then create a hyphen react hyphen app and then at the end here we usually place the name of our react app and that creates a complete new folder in here with our react app but i don't want any other folder inside the front end where we have our react app i want our react app to be generated just inside our front end folder so i'll just use a period and the react app should be generated inside this particular folder so for me i have already done this okay i have already created a react app inside the front end folder so if i extend it this is what was generated by running this command so i want you to do this so that you can create a react app and then after creating the react app how you can start it is by using npm start so when you press enter this should start our react app on the browser okay so after a few minutes uh, your react app will automatically open on the browser and it is running on localhost 3000 so remember our server will be running on localhost 5000 so once uh, the react app uh, completely loads you'll get uh, such an output which is a template for us to get started with so when i come back you can see our react app is running on localhost 3000 and um, in the next video is when we'll start looking at this other 
files that are in here. We have a public folder with all these files. We have an SLC folder with all these files. And then we have the node modules. And that's why you, you need to have Node.js installed for you to uh, work with React. And then uh, when I open app.js here, this is what is included in our application where we have the react logo and then edit and save to the road so if i check here at the browser you can see edit slc app.js and save to the road so we'll start working with uh, all these files in the next video this was just a kind of an introductory video to our front end and uh, from here on we'll now be able to move to more fun stuff so i'll see you next